Hey guys, it's West here, back with another Summoner's War guide video. Today we're going to be talking about something that I see a lot asked in chat, which is which monsters you should keep and which monsters are food for other monsters. Uh, I want to preface this by saying uh, thank you all so much for supporting my channel this far. I get a lot of amazing support in the comments of a lot of my videos. Uh, if you, Of course, if you have any other questions um, that aren't answered in this video, always feel free to write them in the comments below and please like the video as I do put a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, if not, just come back and watch more. That helps me out as well. Um, so without further ado, I'll hop right in. I think it's important to preface this entire video by explaining the system that I'm going to be uh, using to talk about each monster. Uh, of course, the um, category of each monster is typically generalized by come to us and what I mean by that is a monster is given the title of attack HP, support, whatever. When they use those descriptors, uh, those descriptors are extremely general. Um, what I mean by that is they don't really explain um, exactly what the monster does when you when you read attack or when you read support or when you read HP or defense monster. What it does is it very generally gives you an idea of how to ruin that monster. Um, and when you see attack, you very generally are going to ruin that monster for attack. Of course, you usually have to look deeper into depth of that monster to explain how, to, how it's built. And so for the sake of um, making this easier to remember and making it easier to understand some of these monsters, I'm going to, I'm going to have subcategories for each of these descriptors. Uh, of course, in the subcategory of attacker, we are going to have uh, a bruiser, which means that they're going to have um, some HP and defense as well as their attack. And then we're going to have a, um, a nuker, um, which is a monster completely devoted to attack. You know, attack, crit damage, attack, defense, crit damage, defense, depending on the uh, scaling of the monster, maybe even speed, crit damage, defense. Uh, the build will change depending on the monster and their kit. And under the category of supports, we're going to have buffers, uh, strippers, and healers. And we're going to have... Um, the under the HP and defense categories we're going to have uh, tanks so that's not going to be as relevant for moving forward but I just thought it would be important to mention that right off the bat so that everyone understands uh, what I mean when I'm talking about each monster next up when I explain how to ruin them uh, I'm going to name the um, two sets that I'd recommend very early on um, as this guide is kind of pushed more for earlier players who don't fully understand the game or are looking for uh, more advice on monsters they should and shouldn't keep and when I explain the sets I'm going to give a slot 2, slot 4, and slot 6 guide uh, talking about the slot 2, 4, and 6 you're looking for on a unit for example I might say speed, crit damage, attack that means slot 2 speed, slot 4 crit damage, and slot 6 attack so now that we got that out of the way we're going to talk about the monsters that you get right off the bat when the game starts you off from these really basic challenges uh, clearing the B3s they give you uh, Konamaya, the Water Garuda. They give you Dekamaran, the Dark Salamander. They give you Hakalin, the, uh, the Fire Harpu. They give you uh, the Light Imp Taru. And they give you the Wind Yeti, uh, Rakaha, Rakaja. Um, and so these are the monsters they give you just for doing the B3s, which is uh, fairly obtainable for everybody in the game. The, the main monsters we're going to be talking about here, though, are going to be Konamaya and Kaleen and uh, Rakaja, of course. Um, as Dekamaran, the Dark Salamander, and Taru, the uh, Light Imp, aren't as uh, useful for progression. They are interesting monsters that you uh, can build to help you a little bit with your progression, but these other three are a lot more important to talk about, so we're going to hop right into talking about those. So we're going to start with the Fire Harpu Kaleen as her purposes in the beginning of the game scale into the late game if you use her more. Um, for the for the main purposes of this discussion we're going to be talking about using her really early game as she can help you clear through scenario easily uh, by giving your team a heal that it might not have otherwise uh, by giving the attack buff which allows you to increase damage. So early game what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to put her on a triple energy set and that means uh, six energy runes in her build so that she's getting maximum HP. You're going to try to get a speed for slot two if you can, it doesn't matter because uh, her main purpose is going to be helping you clear through scenario at the beginning of the game. Of course after you've cleared through it you want to get her on a swift energy build um, speed slot two, HP slot four, HP slot six or eight or some form of 
defense percentage. Of course, all the HP and defense, you want them to be percentage runes as they will scale with your monster's stats rather than giving a flat amount which will not scale as your monster becomes higher uh, level. But her job is um, as a healer. With her third skill, she uh, heals your team, which is pretty nice, 25%. Uh, and that is scaling with their um, attack, or their HP, I'm sorry, their HP. That is scaling with their HP. So 25% uh, of 10,000 HP would be 2,000 500 HP. It's a fairly good heal, uh, and as you give your other monsters more HP percentage, her heal will do more for them. So as you're building up these support monsters and giving them tons of HP, she will uh, scale with your other monsters as well, which is really, really nice. Um, she also brings a uh, heal block and an attack break. The attack break is the more important part when you're clearing through scenario and we're using her in early stages of giants uh, as in giants b6, giants b7 even. Uh, her first skill will attack break on the first skill which will help you survive more hits from the uh, giants boss and the waves uh, going up to the boss. So she brings a lot in terms of utility uh, of course as a healer and a debuffer. Um, she brings the negative effect on the giant of the attack break so that's pretty much all Colleen is. Like I said, uh, either triple energy in the be very beginning of the game or a swift energy build, speed, HP, HP, uh, as you move on, um, making her tankier and faster if you can because you want her to get her all the turns in the world so that she could constantly have her heal up, constantly be using her attack break. So the next monster we're going to talk about is going to be the Wind Yeti. They give him to you very early on. He's really useful for really early game healing before you get your Belladion, who we'll talk about soon. Um, and he's free. So just getting him up to 4 star max level, you really don't need to worry about making him 5 or 6 star. Because his utility does fall off really fast as you collect other heals. Even as you build up your Colleen to a higher level, um, he will he will kind of drop off in his usefulness. So his HP is based on the number of units, um, the number of surviving allies. So having more allies will increase the level of his healing. So having 5 allies um, when you're in Giants is going to be where he really shines because he'll give you some extra healing. Um, this is of course a monster for Giants B6, Giants B7, not necessarily a monster you want to build for Giants B10 as like I said his healing amount will will really drop down in its usefulness and as a whole this monster will not bring as much to the table but for very very early game he is usable to keep at like 4 star max level. Um, they give him to Awaken so he's got all of his skills and getting scallops for him are fairly easy as you can get them from unknown scrolls which are extremely common in the game. Um, his uh, his second skill has uh, it does damage that is based off of your defense so having a little bit more tank on him is nice. It also has a chance to stun with each attack so it might be a little bit useful during the waves. The stun is not extremely reliable but sometimes you'll get it uh, the first skill, of course, decreases the attack speed of the enemy monster, which is useful in the uh, Giant's Dungeon, as slowing down the boss will get you more turns. But uh, more than anything, he's going to be there for that heal. Uh, just like Colleen, you can put him on a triple energy, um, either speed HP HP, or uh, HP HP HP, or some form of defense percentage in there, of course, making sure they are percentage runes. Uh, and as you progress, you can put him on higher level swift runes, but honestly, um, like I said, he will be replaced very, very fast. And so uh, the next monster that the game gives you that we are going to be talking about is Konamaya. Konamaya, the Water Garuda, brings so much in terms of new mechanics to your team or mechanics that you aren't going to see for a long time, um, and that is uh, cleansing. So Konami is a cleanser, and uh, what that means is she removes all negative effects from your team. So that could mean continuous damage effects or dots, um, it could mean stuns, it could mean slows, attack breaks, defense breaks. All the things that you want to put on enemies, they can put on you in uh, in some dungeon or another. And what Konamaya does is remove all of that and has a little bit of HP recovery. So she's not great as a healer, but she provides a little bit of heal in addition to her AOE cleanse or cleanse on your entire team. So um, 
this is a monster where speed is really a must because anywhere you're bringing Konamaya, it's going to be to constantly remove all of those negative effects on your team. So as soon as you can, you're going to want to get your Konamaya on a swift set and you're going to slowly work on making her faster and faster. She's good all the way up to GB10 if you want to use her there as well. Um, where she really shines, in my opinion, is GB7, because in Giant B7 you're dealing with a lot of continuous damage effects that the boss and the waves leading up to the boss put onto you, and those can kill your team down really, really fast uh, if you do not have a cleanser, and Konami can remove all those, and then your healer can go and heal everyone up, and it's amazing. So honestly, I'd recommend um, you could do triple energy, uh, speed HP HP, speed defense HP, like a typical support, um, and you want to move into Swift as quickly as you can because you want to get Konamaya really, really fast. Usually one of your faster Swift sets um, around 180 speed, so like plus, plus uh, 90, plus 100 speed if you can. Um, on a Swift set, it's not too, too hard once you're, past, once you're up to Giant Speed 7. And uh, Swift Energy is a great set on Konamaya. It can last literally to the end of the game uh, as you make those Swift runes faster and more tanky. Konamaya is a monster you can easily bring up to 5 star and use for a long, long time. Eventually, you can use Konamaya in a Dragon's team as well. But we're not going to delve too deep into there, but just know that Konamaya is um, advantageous throughout the entire game and even into really, really late game uh, if used correctly and uh, built with the correct runes. Of course, the things you're going to want to focus on this monster are going to be speed and then uh, your substats. You want uh, more speed, HP, um, and defense just so that Konamaya can survive through the waves. Uh, so that goes through the monsters you get from those uh, B3 challenges. We also get additional monsters from doing some of these Giants challenges, which is fairly nice as well. So after you've done Giants B3, you get this monster called Bernard. I see a lot of people um, starting really early game don't really fully understand uh, some of these monsters they give you. A lot of these monsters are huge gifts from uh, the creators of the game and will help you hugely in progression if you utilize them correctly, and Bernard is definitely one of them. So, uh, Bernard's kit is really unique. It is, he's a, a speed booster. He's not your typical support who provides some sort of healing or some sort of uh, cleansing or clearing of negative effects. What he does is he makes your entire team faster. So, in Summoner's War, the way your monsters take turns are this little blue bar you see under the health bar. The faster their speed is, the faster that bar increases. Now what Bernard does is he gives you a speed buff and increases that attack bar. Um, so there's two different ways that he makes your team faster. So the speed buff increases your monster's speed by 30, which essentially means whatever the, whatever speed they currently have, you add 30 onto that. And uh, every, every turn they're going to be moving that much faster as a result, um, which means they're going to get more turns more quickly. In addition to that, he increases their attack bar by 30%, which means 30% more of that blue bar um, gets increased after he goes. So he's a monster that the only thing you're really worried about is having a lot, a lot of speed. Now, if you can, you want to give accuracy to him as well, because his second skill does bring a defense break and attack power break that occurs 100% of the time. So um, some of these monsters, you're going to notice something called harmful effect rate, which means how often that ability happens. Um, if the harmful effect rate isn't 100%, then regardless of accuracy and resistance, there's already a chance that that ability can miss. Now, if it doesn't say anything about harmful effect rate like this, is, this ability does, it means that it will occur 100% of the time unless it gets resisted. So uh, it's, it's really advantageous for your team to try to get as much of uh, that kind of ability as possible because it's a lot more reliable than a skill that only occurs 50% of the time. Because with, with um, accuracy and resistance, it can sometimes miss even if it has a 100% chance. So having it a harmful effect rate to be a lot higher, like this ability, um, it allows your team to be a lot more consistent and you could really rely on this once you give him some accuracy. So that brings me into the runes that you're going to want for him. You are going to want to get him on Swift. Uh, I'd recommend Swift Energy. Energy just gives him some extra HP. The Swift, of course, gives him the speed. And the substats are going to want a lot, a lot of speed. You can actually sacrifice um, accuracy on this monster a little bit more just because you want to give him a ridiculous amount of speed as the faster this monster is, the faster your entire team is because the more often he can use his third skill and buff your team, 
the more often the rest of your team gets to move. So by having him, you essentially give your entire speed, your entire team a lot more speed. So he's hugely beneficial to bring for earlier teams, and he uh, brings so much to the table. Once you can get some accuracy on him as well, um, of course the accuracy, the max amount of accuracy you're going to need in Giants is going to be 45%. So you just try to aim through that uh, for that through substats. You can put it on slot six if you're using a higher level slot four. Like if you have an HP percent five star or six star, for example, where that percentage is going to be really really high. He has a lot of natural survivability already with his uh, base stats, his base HP being relatively high, and his base defense being all right. So you can actually potentially sacrifice that slot six for an accuracy percentage to land this. Of course, you want to keep in mind, uh, you don't want to sacrifice much speed. You do want him as fast as possible, eventually reaching up to crazy speeds like 300 speed. It's nuts. Um, just work on it as you go. But like I said, swift energy on this guy. He will be hugely beneficial if you put him into your Giants team and for your early game progression. Of course, also you want to try to get skill ups for him. Uh, the Tamor Desert, um, it's two stages before Feynman. That's where you want to farm for his skill ups so that he can get max skilled so that his third skill has the lowest cooldown possible, which would of course allow him to do it more. And you can see that goes from a five turn cooldown to a three turn cooldown. So the next monster that you get from the Giants challenges, which will make a huge difference, is the Wind Pixie. And I know I went to Bernard before I went to Shannon. Um, that's only out of I really wanted to save the bread and butter of your team for last. So just from checking the strategy info, you don't even have to be capable of beating anything. You get this monster called Shannon. Shannon is a another monster that's going to be huge for your progression that brings a lot to your table. She makes your monsters significantly, significantly stronger as what she does is she's called a buffer. So we'll go ahead and we'll talk about her more in depth. So her first skill applies a glancing hit. Um, which means that the enemy has a 30% uh, chance to, um, or a 50% chance, I'm sorry, to glance. And if they glance, they do, um, they do reduce damage. And, um, and th that basically means that uh, they, no matter what they were to uh, do, they're not going to be able to do that. For example, if a monster uh, were to stun, then they can't stun if they hit a glancing hit, they can't attack break you if they hit a glancing hit, they can't apply any negative effects to you if they hit a glancing hit, um, which is amazing. They also can't hit a crit on you, and uh, a crit is something um, that occurs when you're attacking a monster. A lot of monsters have a built-in percent chance, a 15% chance built-in, some monsters have higher. But damage dealing monsters, uh, we're going to talk about later, are going to be building that crit rate so that they can hit really big numbers on you. And if you um, have a glancing hit, they can't hit you with a critical hit, which means you're further reducing the amount of damage they do. So where she really shines is in giants, because if she puts that on the big giant boss, along with an attack break from Bernard or someone else on your team, you're essentially greatly reducing the amount of damage your team is taking, meaning that it's okay to have slightly lower HP. As long as you're getting those off, it means that your team's not going to get one hit. It means you're going to survive for longer. So her first skill is really impactful to your team. Although it doesn't have a high chance of landing, it is still super useful and very relevant to talk about. Her second skill is an attack speed slow. So you've noticed we have an attack speed buff. We've had an attack speed buff in the form of Bernard. Now we have an attack speed slow in the form of Shannon. Hers does, however, go up to 100% as you skill her up. So this will be a reliable 100% harmful effect rate. You'll see this 80% chance does go up to 100 as you give her skill up. So that's what the harmful effect rate plus means. So it will be 100% chance to attack speed slow, uh, of course, with the accuracy resistance. Um, so I think it's really important to note that her paired with Bernard, you are getting significantly more turns. So what attack speed slow does is it decreases the enemy's speed by uh, 30%, which means their attack bar will fill up 30% slower. So uh, by having her and Bernard together, you are making the enemies 30% slower, and you're making your team 30% faster, plus that 30% attack bar. So uh, as a pair, these two will give you a ridiculous amount of turns on the waves, and of course uh, at the boss stage where it's really, really important to get more turns than the boss. Um, 
of course as a normal support you are going to want to want to build her on uh, some fast runes and some really tanky runes you do want her to survive if she doesn't make it to the boss or if she can't take one hit from the boss then she uh she's too squishy or she's too weak so it's important to put um some energy runes on her you can either do uh six uh six energy runes or three sets of energy runes or uh what i'd recommend to do is a swift energy build um speed hp hp you really want to maximize on her hp as her base stats are not amazing you could also do an hp defense percentage um uh build if you want to to try to give her even more tanky stats to survive more hits i would highly recommend putting more hp so that your heals from your other monsters will increase her health more significantly uh, the other important thing is they have lots of speed of course you want her doing these skills as much as possible and now we get to talk about her bread and butter and why she wants so much speed so what she does for your team is she increases the attack power and the defense power of your entire team and what that means is whatever their base stat is is increased by 50% uh, for attack so their attack is increased by 50% so if their attack is uh, 800 their attack goes up to um, 1600 so it's amazing it's based on their total stats so if you give monsters runes and their attacks go up to 2000 uh, after runes then with the attack buff their attack is going to be 1000 more so their attack will be 3000 total so it's huge and then her de and then her defense uh, that's increased is by 70% on your entire team so your entire team gets 70% more defense which is really really amazing it means that all of them are going to be stronger to survive it's easier for them to uh, make it through those waves and it's on a three turn cooldown or, or on a four turn cooldown and it lasts three turns when you have it max skill up which means um, on the fourth turn when the cooldown ha when the uh, when the skill has basically worn off she will essentially be able to do it again so if you make her faster than the rest of your team or at least the second fastest unit of course you want your first fastest to be Bernard um, and you're pairing them together then uh, as long as Shannon goes faster than every other monster on your team by at least one speed she will have this up infinitely on your team your team will always have a defense buff and always have an attack buff up constantly uh, because it is always up the the turn that it goes off or the turn that it runs out on Shannon is the turn that she can put it up again uh, thanks to the duration of it and the uh, cooldown once you have her max skilled which is very significant because it essentially means your team has infinite attack power and defense buff meaning they're infinitely going to be boosted stat wise so by having shannon on your team uh, you're making it way easier for your team to survive and do damage and you're speeding up your runs and increasing the survivability of your team at the same time which is amazing she brings so much to the table and of course with the attack speed slow paired with the attack speed increase on your team uh, from bernard uh, as a combo they can bring so so much to your team and of course the glancing also reduces the damage the boss does and that's great as well um she's also a two-star monster which means that scaling her up is ex insanely easy you can ins you could scale up from monsters from the unknown scrolls of course you want to feed her other pixies doesn't matter what element you want to feed her other pixies and you want to get her skilled up as fast as possible that she could so she could really uh perform everything she needs to uh, do consistently and have the lower cooldowns so that's pretty much all the monsters that uh, Comptos gives you right off the bat, which is a significant amount. Um, so we'll do we'll do a quick recap talking about all the different stuff you get. So of course you have healers in the form of uh, Kaleen and uh, Rakaja, as well as um, you have your your buffers in the form of Shannon and Bernard that are really really significant. You could also have Kaleen uh, in your in your giants team as well, but we're going to talk about another monster that the game really wants to push you in that they do hint on in their in the daily dungeon tips challenges so when they talk about the uh, space in between the collect uh, or the conqueror b3 and the conqueror b7 they talk about collecting pieces now what they explain to you that some people may miss if they don't go ahead and read through all these uh, because i know it's a little bit tedious they do tell you to get the light in agonomy this monster is called belladion Belladion is a fairly significant healer in the game um, and brings a unique set of skills that are all amazing for giants. So on the first skill, we have a 100% chance, once it's awakened, of uh, 
landing uh, landing a defense break on the boss for two turns. That is very unique because very few monsters in the game have a 100% chance of landing a defense break on the first skill that lasts for two turns. Of course, it only lands on one enemy, but once you get to the boss or the middle of boss, um, this is the skill that really matters because defense break greatly increases your damage. Now what defense break does is it reduces the enemy's defense by 70%. So 70% of their defense is gone by doing that. For example, if they have 2000 defense, then after using this skill, they're only going to have 600 defense left. And what defense does is it reduces the amount of damage that a monster takes. So the greater your defense, the greater the damage the monster takes. The uh, HP um, only increases the amount of those hits that you can take, but defense reduces um, the amount of damage per hit. So by defense breaking, you're essentially saying, okay, that, that doesn't matter nearly as much, and then you implement something like Shannon's attack buff, and your damage is just exponentially increased because of all the different percentage changes in your monster stats and the enemy's monster stats. The next skill that is very unique is the, uh, we're gonna call, well, this is called a strip which uh, removes the beneficial effects from the enemy. For example, a beneficial effect could be a defense buff, a speed buff, an attack buff. All the things that we're putting on our team, some dungeons are going to have the same things as well, and we're going to have to remove them. Uh, in the Giants, you're going to see attack buff, you're going to see um, defense buff, and those are things you want to take off on the Giant so that they're not doing as much damage to you, and they're not reducing any damage that you can potentially do to them. So this can take off their defense buff which uh, further allows you to do more damage it can take off their attack buff which allows your team to survive and with the third skill you have a, um, a another amazing skill it increases the attack bar of your entire team by 30 percent and it heals their hp by 30 percent too which is a significant amount of heal especially as you make your monsters um, having higher hp uh, the higher hp they have of course the more uh, heal they're going to get and uh, the attack bar increases great as well because it's essentially like Bernard's skill minus the speed buff. Um, they, it, this is a heal along with attack bar increase. So paired with a monster like Bernard, uh, you're getting more speed from the speed buff. You're having two monsters that increase the attack bar, and you're having a pretty sizable heal. 30% of any monster's health is going to be a significant amount. Um, you're looking at numbers anywhere from three to 6,000, depending on how much HP you give to your monsters. So a really really good heal especially early game uh, this is going to be the monster that can really really change the game for you of course you can get this on Sundays um, Sundays server time um, when you're uh, when you're farming for secret dungeons of course the secret dungeons are down here and uh, of course depending on the day you will see different sorts of drops of course you want to pay attention to the light day or the day that the Hall of Light opens, because that is when you can get that secret dungeon drop that is so amazing. Um, you'll see a lot of people be will be asking for it. Uh, I do uh, Hall of Heroes events or um, secret dungeon events on my uh, Twitch channel, so Sundays I do try to host a Bella Finding event on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash westorios. Um, not to plug myself, but just to uh, help out newer players if they are looking for a Bella Dion secret dungeon so that they can get that Bella and help out their progression. Because I realize the monster is very elusive and very sought after as well. So I love to help out new players get that. And, uh, and yeah, Bella is an amazing monster. Another monster you want skilled up, a little bit more difficult to skill up. You can get the skill ups at Garen Forest here, very at the very beginning. You can get water inagami drops from just doing the runs in here, getting your energy runes. So it's a very two in one place to get a good progression. You get your skill ups for Belladion. And uh, when I'm talking about skill ups for monsters, you typically don't want to feed those types of monsters into other monsters um, to level them up until they are skilled up. So you don't want to waste your Inagamis on Shannon or Bernard when you still haven't skilled up your Bella. Another place you can get them is in Talayan Forest. You're not going to be farming here as much. I wouldn't really recommend trying to get your monsters on focus early game because the benefit you'll get from having more HP is going to matter more than that 20% accuracy early game just because you really want your monsters to survive. And no matter how much accuracy they have, it does not matter if your monster doesn't survive long enough to do the skill that you're bringing them for. 
which is why I would prefer energy over focus. The other place you can get your um, Inagami skill ups are here at Feynman, but uh, farming there is going to be more difficult, of course, and uh, and as such, I wouldn't highly recommend it in the beginning. If you can, uh, more power to you. The last monster that come to us gives you um, that really impacts your progression. You get after completing Mount Sis. This is the second stage of scenario. You get Lapis, the uh, Water Magic Knight. Uh, this monster is very unique and very strong for progression for many reasons, and we're going to talk about all of them here. Um, also, room set for Belladion, uh, that would be Swift Energy. Uh, just like Bernard, just like Shannon, you're going to want uh, Speed, HP, HP, or Speed, HP, Defense, uh, making Bella tanky, making Bella really, really fast, because of course you want to get those heals off um, as fast as possible. And you'll see that's a huge trend here for Bella, Shannon, uh, Bernard, and pretty much any other healer, stripper, or buffer. You're going to want them very fast. On uh, very fast speed, like Swift, um, an offset like Energy, or, or two two rune set like Energy, to give them extra HP and survivability. And for substats, of course, you're going to look for speed. You're going to look for HP. You're going to look for defense. And of course, you want accuracy. The uh, higher your accuracy is, the more efficient that, or the more consistent that monster will be. Of course, 45% is the highest efficient accuracy or the highest accuracy that will make a difference. Anything above 45% is sort of wasted in uh, in Giants. So just aim for 45% with your Belladia and your Shannon Bernard and substats. Um, like I said, Bernard's the only exception that can really take an accuracy in slot 6. You can do the same with your Belladia. Just make sure you're not surviving too much survivability, or you may start to see your runs in Giants and in Scenario start to fail. Um, and so the last monster we're going to talk about is Lapis, or the Water Magic Knight. So the reason this monster is so unique is because it is a natural 4-star monster. The other monsters we've talked about are natural 2-star, natural 3-star, and natural 3-star. So natural 4-star monsters are more rare. You cannot get them from unknown scrolls. You can only get them from mystical scrolls, legendary scrolls, um, what, uh, different elemental scrolls. And occasionally you can get them from a wish very, very, very rarely. Um, and so getting skill ups for them is going to be significantly harder but where the water magic knight is very very unique is she does not need any skill ups to really make an impact on your team she is the first attack monster you're getting um, i'd put her in the class of nuker uh, it's she's fairly flexible though you can also build her as a bruiser uh, with some tank and survivability so that she is making more of an impact on your team what I mean by that is you can put her on, of course, a Fatal Set because you want to increase her attack as much as possible. Uh, fatal Sets you can get from Mount Sizz. And the Offset can be either Energy or Blade. Energy bringing her more HP and making her more of a Bruiser. And Blade making her more of a Nuker where you're focused on getting more crit rate. Um, of course, you want to build her as uh, Attack, Attack, Attack. So Attack in Slot 2, 4, and 6. You can build her as speed, attack, attack, speed in slot 2, attack in slot 4, attack in slot 6. You could build her attack crit uh, crit rate attack, so crit rate in slot 4. Um, or you can do crit damage in slot 4, but keep in mind, you don't ever want to do crit damage in slot 4 until your monster has 70% um, or higher crit rate um, without that crit rate in slot 4. So stay uh, attack, 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 or attack crit rate attack until you have enough uh, critical rate substats or uh, stats inside your runes, see these critical critical rate stats. You don't want to put her on a crit damage in slot 4 until she has enough critical rate um, from her other runes. So don't push too fast into that last build until your other runes have really caught up to you. Uh, when you clear scenario, you do get a nice set. I highly recommend you choose the fatal set. That will make a huge impact and it will give you great runes for your Magic Knight to be a, a relatively strong nuker early on. And then you can start worrying about those crit rate and crit damage in slot 4. But for early on, I'd recommend attack, attack, attack. Either Fatal Blade for a little bit more crit rate or Fatal Energy so that she has a little bit more survivability in dungeons. So now we're going to hop into her skills. Uh, she's unique because all of her skills are AoE or area of effect, which means every single one of her skills will hit multiple units, uh, theoretically. And so her first skill... Um, unawakened is just an AoE. She selects one target, hits it two times, and then a third strike uh, will hit all enemies for an okay amount of damage. Um, so, because she's a nat 4, her base stats are higher than a nat 3 or a nat 2. 
uh, you'll see that as a trend the higher the base star rating of a monster the higher its base stats will be but of course you can evolve any monster um, up to you know four or five or six star to increase their stats of course the highest natural star rating is a natural five star which are extremely rare um, and um, you'll see that because she has higher base stats it's easier for her to do more damage with uh, less runes so as you give her better runes of course she will do more damage and she will scale better with her runes so her first skill uh, is an AoE when you awaken her her first skill is an AoE that um, reduces attack bar by 25% for every hit which is very unique it basically means you're taking away their attack bar uh, so that little blue bar that they have you are reducing it with every hit potentially with a 50% chance so it sometimes can be really nice if you are using it on a select monster for example the giant if it activates every single time you're reducing his attack bar by 75% and if he has a slow debuff from Shannon and a speed buff from Bernard then you will see um, you get huge turn advantage over him and it will make a very significant difference the second turn it shoots four bullets uh, randomly the first hit will always hit the monster you select but the three hits following that first one will hit random targets and uh, each of those each of those uh, hits has a 50 percent chance to defense break a monster for two turns uh, this this skill can sometimes give you a defense break that you're looking for um, the damage multiplier on this skill is better than the first skill so you will see bigger numbers off of this skill so it's a nice skill it occasionally gives you an extra defense break um, not super super reliable but it's nice and it helps you clear through the waves and of course it's a, it's an AOE so it'll hit multiple enemies the third skill is why she is so good though uh, her third skill steals uh, HP from all enemies it recovers damage according to the damage dealt and it takes 25% of every monsters attack bar um, so 25% of, of the attack bar from every single monster and if it hits on four monsters she gets a hundred percent attack bar back and she gets an additional turn essentially if she hits more than five her attack bar goes more than a hundred percent it doesn't physically the attack bar doesn't physically go higher but she will outspeed another monster if it only has a hundred percent attack bar so that's uh, very notable but with an attack buff on her if she's doing enough damage she can essentially heal herself from nothing to full if she has enough attack that's why giving her a lot of HP is sometimes very useful because she can have uh, very high HP and some damage and you can see her get her HP all the way back up after she's taken a few hits and with the attack bar reduction she's a damage dealer who brings utility to your team which you won't see a whole lot of um, of course this meaning this meaning that she provides more to your team than just damage which is very very useful because the more utility is, that is in your team um, the more reliable it'll be or the more consistent you're going to see those uh, wins of course she also has this leadership skill which is really nice early on since you do not really get uh, gifted with a monster that has a, a very impactful or a very strong leadership skill she has the attack power leadership for all monsters which is nice because it's not based in any section of the game you will see some that are for uh, dungeons only like this one so it will only work in places like uh, giants dragons um, the Hall of Light, the different halls, the Karos dungeon area. Uh, you will also see some that are only for Guild Wars, and then you will see some that are only for Arena as well, or only for specific attributes. And so it's very notable to say that this works anywhere in the game. It is a universal leadership skill. So it's nice to have in places like Giants to increase your team's overall damage, increases her damage. And she's a really really useful monster and the reason why i think she is so impactful to early game players is not only is she a natural four star monster um, but she does not need any skill ups you do not need to worry about putting a single devil mon into her because the benefits she gets from devil mon are only damage um, and she gets a little harmful effect rate on her second skill but it's honestly very negligible as the chance of it landing doesn't go up significantly uh, she's going to do what she has to do even without it and uh, the fact that all of her skills are naturally on a three turn cooldown is a huge gift um, typically what you'll see with a natural four star monster is their second and third skills are going to have higher cooldowns and the longer that cooldown is the longer it will take before that monster gets to use their ability and oftentimes you'll see a natural four star monster um, i'm going to use stella for example 
you will see harmful effect rate. So this monster will not do the second skill as efficient as efficiently as she should before she is max skilled. See, and that's also on a four turn cooldown until she's max skilled. This is on a five turn. This is on a six turn cooldown until she's max skilled. So you'll see a lot of these monsters that actually hold your abilities hostage by needing skill ups. Um, and Magic Knight does not, which means she does not need any Devilmon. You can save up your Devilmon in storage um, for a monster that really, really deserves it, which is why I think she's such a great monster. Just to go over the um, the monsters we're talking about for um, Giants, so essentially everything except for Belladion is given to your team um, for Giants. This is the team I recommend that can um, basically take you through all of the progression up until you know giants b7 giants b8 area uh, just because it brings so much utility this team is freaking amazing of course mine is not really ruined up because i have kind of gone past that part of the game but for earlier sections of the game um, this is this is amazing this will get you all the way up to giants b10 if you give these monsters runes um, you have so much utility here you have the attack bar reduction from lapis and of course the damage you have Belladion, who is bringing a defense break, which increases your defense and heals your monsters. Bernard, which speeds everybody up. And uh, Shannon, which buffs everybody. And then you have the cleanses from Konamaya, the slow from Shannon. Um, Konamaya also gives turns with the second skill. Uh, of course, the four support monsters, everyone except for Lapis, you can put on a swift energy build. Just worry about giving them lots of HP and lots of speed. Accuracy is a bonus. And for uh, Lapis, of course, you're, you're going to want to get lots and lots of attack. Um, HP, too, if you want. HP from substats and the energy runes. Um, you could even put a speed, uh, speed slot, too, if you want. Um, but just try to give her a lot of attack. And some speed is really nice in substats, too, uh, so that she's doing damage and it's consistent. And this team can carry you throughout the entire game. You just slowly progress and give them better and better runes. So that covers the entire section about the starting monsters that come to us gives. I really wanted to stress this section because I think this section is most important and most impactful for um, new players. Now what I said at the beginning was that you never feed a 5 star, a natural 5 star, and you never feed a natural 4 star until you know exactly what you're feeding and know for a fact that you're not going to want another one of that one or that specific monster in the future. Of course, nat, fee nat 3s you can feed, but it really depends. And now we are going to be talking about specific Nat 3s. So we're going to start in the fire category, just because it's the first category on this list. Um, I'm only going to talk about the monsters that I think are semi-impactful or can have some sort of difference. A lot of people like this guy, Raok, the fire and Agami. Uh, he's a fire damage dealer that has a defense break on the first skill and has um, a chance, a 30% chance, to continuously attacking. Uh, continuously attack and can hypothetically attack you know 20 times or whatever extremely extremely unlikely but can hypothetically do it as a result of the 30% chance to consecutively attack it's not of course it's not a reliable multi-attack but it occasionally can uh, he's a cool unit um, is he gonna bring a lot to your progression no uh, can he have fun can you have fun with that unit definitely um, so when you're building a unit like him you want to uh, p think about what you really really need uh, whether it's progression or having fun with the game. Of course, by all means, if you want to have fun with the game, uh, you're welcome to build one Fatal Blade, attack or damage attack. Uh, the next monster uh, I'm going to talk about, I'm skipping through any monsters that I don't think are very relevant. Um, Spectra, we have the uh, Fire Griffin. He has an attack bar reduction and damage based on enemies max HP. He's good for uh, Trial of Ascension, which is something you'll come across um, and is the next uh, natural stage of progression or going through the game after you've completed Giants B10 and have been in Giants B10 for a while. Uh, Trial of Ascension, he does a lot. He attack speed slows them and reduces their attack bar. He's like a reverse Bernard with that skill. So rather than speed buffing and giving your uh, team more attack bar, he is speed slowing the enemy and reducing their attack bar. And then he has da does damage based on the enemy's max HP. So when you pair him with Bernard, you're getting a ridiculous amount of turns in TOA, which is really, really important. So he's really, really nice there. Uh, that's about all you use him for. You could use him in Dragon's B10 as well. But honestly, I find way too many people are forcing Dragon's B10 way too early. Um, so you can build him for TOA, and that's that's the the biggest purpose. Speed HP, HP, Swift Energy. You could do Speed Crit Damage HP, 
um, on Swift Blade, but it's a lot harder to ruin him that way. So I, I suggest just a support for now. And of course you're going to need accuracy so he can land his skills. The uh, next monster of note is Kali the Fire High Elemental. She's a monster that you use a lot more when you're further in the game, um, past Dragon's level, or just have been in Giants for a very, uh, very reasonable amount of time. Uh, her damage is Ignore Defense, and she's a 3-star, uh, natural 3-star monster with Ignore Defense, which is why she's so relevant. She's really good at killing those um, annoying Wind Nat 5s, uh, notably ones that scale with defense. So the uh, Wind War Bear, the uh, Wind, or I'm sorry, the Wind Panda, uh, the Wind War Bear as well, the Wind Archangel. Uh, monsters, but most notably monsters that are high level, scale with defense, and are going to be a big threat to your team. If you give her a lot of attack and a lot of crit damage, and of course you have to have at least 70% crit rate, um, then she can take out those huge monsters with the uh, massive ignored defense hitch that she puts on. In addition to that, she has an attack bar and attack speed buff, as well as giving herself invincibility for one turn. So she brings a lot in terms of guild wars, um, not as much in terms of uh, actual progression. She can be used in dragons with very, very high rune requirements. Um, so be careful when you're trying to push the envelope with teams like that. Uh, we're going to skip past a lot of these units just because their impact isn't massive on uh, progression. Of course, the big thing we're trying to talk about right now is three stars that are um, really notable. We have fire, uh, the Fire Frankenstein Bulldozer. He's another three star that does a ridiculous amount of damage uh, and is ignore defense damage. So Bulldozer is nice, but he requires defense percentage. And getting those runes are typically runes you're going to find in dragons because most of the time you'll see guard and blade used as his rune sets. Of course, you can use swift uh, defense, crit damage defense to really uh, do damage with him. Um, but the problem is he does stun himself, so if you do not kill the target you're attacking, he does leave himself open for attack and uh, basically misses out on an entire turn after attacking. So he's another one of those fire monsters you're bringing to take out a very specific threat, and if he does not take out that specific threat, then he loses a lot of his usefulness. He's a decent monster. Uh, the fire elven ranger, ranger Adrian um, is used for uh, Necro, Necropolis. Uh, not uh, not many other uses besides that, so uh, fairly ignorable monster. Of course, I know a lot of these other monsters have some usability in other places of the game. I'm trying to note the monsters that are useful for, for progression and that early game players won't know about. Um, the Fire Harg, you, you're going to see some Hargs early game. You can get them from Unknown Schools as well, of course. They're still 3-star. Uh, very useful for later in the game. If you're not sure if you want to build one now, at least save the skill ups for later. Um, the passive is very unique, removes two harmful effects from the monster with the lowest HP and heals them for 10%, which is very uh, useful because it's a passive skill, which means it happens every single uh, every single turn that he takes. So monster can be very, very useful in things like Guild Wars, um, uh, eventually a, an extra cleanser in somewhere like Dragons. He gets extra turns uh, to your slowest monsters with the first skill and entire attack bars with the second skill, as well as the speed buff. So super useful uh, if you're not sure if you if you want to build one or not uh, don't just go and feed them I highly recommend you save them for later because they're super useful uh, like I said with net fours you're never gonna want to feed uh, net fours without really knowing what they're specifically good for so I wouldn't recommend that you go ahead and feed any net fours that you don't fully understand so next we're gonna fly right on through these um, these water net threes uh, I'm not going to be covering all the net fours because there's so many different niche places they can be used in um, besides progression. If you guys are interested in that, I will do um, a very specific monster family uh, video series next, but for the time being I want to stick to these monsters that I think can be really relevant uh, for progression. So we have the Water Imp Champion, uh, Yaku. He's fairly interesting. He's another nat 3 that ignores defense. You can see a trend here. Uh, nat 3s that ignore defense or provide some sort of uh, damage that you won't find elsewhere are the ones that are typically the strongest, um, or strongest in terms of nat 3s, just because as the game goes on you can really scale up their damage with better runes. So really, really late game players can give these monsters extremely powerful runes and make them work because of that ignore defense damage that they have potential to put out. So. 
Having ignore defense means that they can bring a lot. This one is a uh, five attack skill, and each attack has a 25% chance to ignore a defense. If he ignores defense on every hit, it is a ridiculous amount of damage. Of course, that is not always going to happen because it's only a 25% chance to occur. Damage based on max HP with the second skill usually tells you he's got usability in some sort of dungeon. Uh, where he really shines is in dragons. You can use him in giants as well. Uh, his damage to the boss with this skill is fairly decent. And his damage to uh, the giant with the third skill can be very, very significant. Uh, if you give him an attack buff and he gets to the um, boss stage. Of course, this monster has fairly high rune requirements. You want to give him a lot of attack. You want to give him a lot of speed. Um, of course, he needs crit rate and crit damage. Uh, but you also need him to survive to the boss wave, so a little bit of HP or a team that is so powerful that he's not going to have any risk of taking a hit is fairly important as well. Another nat 3 you'll hear talked about a lot is Megan, the water mystic witch. Uh, she is another buffer similar to Shannon, um, dissimilar in the way that her attack buff and um, defense buff only last for 2 turns rather than 3, and she has the same school on, uh, cooldown on max guild, she also has a 4 turn cooldown, which means that there's going to be this awkward turn, uh, it's a big reason why I don't recommend her in giants anymore, is there is this awkward turn gap between um, when her defense and attack buff ends on her and when she's able to put up another one, whereas with Shannon, the second, the turn that Shannon's attack buff and defense buff runs out, she can put up another one right afterward um, with with Megan uh, you have this one turn in between it where your entire team is vulnerable and so if you're in giant stage and you're not fast enough to lap the giant twice with Megan then what's gonna happen is you're gonna you might take a turn the giant might go you might have defense break on your team you have no defense buff and your team is essentially naked it has no uh, beneficial effect buffs from Megan so your team can just get smacked and it doesn't have that 70 70 percent defense cushion to absorb that damage and so your team will get destroyed so I think it's really important to uh, note that if you are gonna put her in your Giants team you have to do you have to make her extremely fast uh, of course her base speed is actually 18 slower than Shannon's I believe um, it might be a little bit less but Shannon's is 110 one something and uh, Megan's is only 97 97 base speed is very very slow uh, for someone you uh, want to be in a uh, as a buffer for your team she does have a strip beneficial and block beneficial effects on the second skill that goes up to 100% at max skill and a continuous damage effect on the first skill. So uh, that's why she really works well in uh, dragons to remove the immunity effect. Uh, she's also really good in arena because her third buffing skill does also increase attack bar. Attack bar is extremely important to manipulate in arena because it's all about taking the first turn where that is the current meta of 2017 to 2018 summoners were arena. So it's really important to have that um, attack bar increase. So that's why she's really good in arena. You can see she also has that arena attack power lead, which is sometimes beneficial for your team. Other than that, water monsters that are um, super usable or uh, really important and can really impact progression, there's not really any other water monsters of note. Uh, you do have Rena, who is usable in um, arena defenses. Uh, she's a really, really tanky monster, but the thing is you have to give her a lot of HP, a lot of defense, a monster that you'll build later. Heading back to two stars, there is Tark. Tark is an extremely useful two-star monster. Um, does a lot of damage, another monster that requires really, really good stats. You do want to give him a lot of attack, a lot of crit rate, a lot of crit damage, and a lot of speed, because he groups up with your allies and basically lowers their cooldowns by helping them take a turn uh, to randomly selected allies. Uh, not as great in Giants as the multi-hits on the Giant boss will get him to revenge you and essentially kill this unit. But in Dragons, very, very usable. Um, very useful moving forward. And that's it for the Water units. We're going to head into the Wind units. And the Wind units is where you see the most flexibility just because um, there's a lot of usability in Giants. And Giants is really the one place that's most important to get your team rolling so you can make as much progression as, fa as possible because you really, really want those runes. Um, monsters that I see a lot of people build, you have the Wind War Bear Ramagas. Just because you see big numbers, uh, he's he's not amazing. He's cool, uh, I suppose, if you want to have a f have fun with the unit and you only want to put energy runes on him. Six energy runes, HP, 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 and just get his HP as high as possible, like 40,000 HP. He can be usable. He's not extremely unique. He doesn't really bring much to the table in terms of utility for your team 
Uh, I have some seen some people build the Wind Harpoon Seal. Seal has a lot of utility for uh, giants as well. Potentially as an extra support monster if you want attack bar reduction. Um, you have the defense perk and you have the dot on the second skill. Dot for three turns or continuous damage, which does damage based on the uh, boss's max HP or enemy's max HP. So when you use that on the giant's boss, he will take 5% um, damage for every continuous damage effect. So it's a fairly effective way of taking down the boss if you want a very safe team and you want to bring all wind monsters. Of course, bringing a wind monster to giant's B10 is most ideal as wind monsters... Um, have elemental advantage over water monsters. Water monsters will sometimes hit a glancing hit, even if they don't have a glancing debuff. So I think that's fairly relevant to uh, point out. Um, who else do we have here? Of course, we've talked about the Wind Griffin. We have uh, Michelle, the Wind Epikeon Priest. She's fairly useful. She's a reviver early on. She also extends the time of beneficial effects. Not extremely uh, useful for progression. She could be used in TOA though. She has some very unique purposes. So a monster that you can look at for the future if you're thinking about that. The Wind Drunken Master Juan. Uh, he's another unique giant's unit who brings uh, two forms of heal. He's got a 15% heal each turn buff with the third skill and then a heal and crit rate, um, crit rate block on the second skill which reduces the chance of your team being hit by a crit. Uh, of course, all of his skills are based off of attack power, so he's an attack-based healer, which is a little bit awkward for building early game as the stat requirements are high, but if you can get away with it like a speed attack HP build on Fatal Energy, um, he can bring a lot to your team. And he's got some unique purposes uh, as well. We have Copper, another three-star unit that ignores defense. It's a huge trend here, as these monsters can really, really scale into late game, another monster you want to be looking at. Um, if the enemy H, if the enemy's defense is lower than 50% of yours, then you will ignore defense with this unit. For example, if the enemy's defense is 800 and yours is 1,600, uh, then you will ignore defense. But if yours is 1,599, you will not. So it's really relevant to pay attention to that. Uh, another, this is a monster that is important to bring a defense buffer with, uh, as it will not only increase your damage because this damage does ba is based off your defense, but will also solidify you ignoring defense. By having it more than double of your more than double your opponent's defense, also second skill skills with defense, really really useful monster in Guild Wars, not as useful in progression. And then lastly in this category, we have Mav, uh, extremely useful in TOA. He reduces the um, cool turn cool time turns of your team, which means all of their skills are reduced by one turn of cool time. Uh, for example, if they have uh, two turns left on a cooldown for a skill, and Mav uses his third skill, then they now have one turn left, which means next turn when they go, it will likely be up. So in addition to that, removes one harmful effect. So he does a little bit of uh, cleansing on your team, removes one harmful effect from all allies. From each ally, he removes one and gives them a speed buff for one turn, uh, for two turns, I'm sorry, which means that they're moving you know, 30% faster, or 30 speed faster for uh, one turn. He also provokes, which means the enemy has to attack him. So in TOA, uh, he you know he could take a monster and says, okay, this monster has to attack me, so he can't attack whatever a low HP monster, and heals himself for 25%, which is really, really uh, unique since he's basically causing that monster to do damage to them. He is preemptively healing to um, increase his survivability. And then a stun on the first skill, which is really, really nice. Helps him uh, take monsters that you don't want to see out of the picture. And so those are the main monsters that are going to be useful um, or you're really going to want to look at. Of course, other monsters have potential to be built, but those are the monsters that I find most important to really pay attention to uh, early in the game and early in progression. Three star wise, uh, of course, this guide was mostly uh, to be general and to talk about um, the issue of people feeding uh, natural four stars, natural five stars sometimes and really valuing the monsters that come to us gives you to progress. Like I said, that team, uh, really early game, uh, the Magic Knight, Bernard, uh, Shannon, Bella Dion, and Konamaya can carry you all the way through uh, Giants and get you all the runes you need. Um, like I said, the supports, you just need Swift Energy, Speed HP, HP, worry about the speed, worry about the HP, try to get some accuracy and even some defense if you can. Um, those monsters are great. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you feed them. Uh, of course, if you pull a natural 5-star monster and it's a wind natural 5-star monster, there's a very good chance it has usability in giants. 
And like I said, I would not recommend you ever feed any natural four or five star monster. So that's about it for this video. Um, I did put a lot of effort and thought into this video. So uh, if you could like it, it really helps me out and lets me know that you guys appreciate it. If you guys are looking for some more specific content and you'd like me to cover every single specific family of monsters, I'll go over and cover every single element of every family of monsters. Uh, I could start that series right away. Just let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, it's West again. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more.